Yo, what up? My name is Lost Boy X, also known as LBX. We're here at Top Tier Topics in Nashville. And tonight, we with your host, D. Gray, and we're going to be talking about everything that I've been through in my music. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Top Tier Topics. So excited to do this special episode here with my guy, LBX, man. LBX in the building, man. Yo, what up? My name is Lost Boy X. Man, I appreciate you coming on to the show, brother, man. Give me some love, man. man. No problem. Definitely, 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 man. So we're going to dive right into this, man. You have a crazy <laughs> life, man. It's an interesting story. That's the reason why you sit on this chair right now on uh, Top 10 Topics Thank right you. now. Appreciate so we're going to dive right into it. We're going to get all start off with your music, man. That's right. one of the fascinating stories about you is your music and the way that you began to do music. So start off with LBX, man. Like, where did Lost Boy X, like, come, come from? I right, um, so... Lost Boy X, my let's take uh my biggest inspiration. My biggest inspiration is Machine Gun Kelly. Definitely. And uh his song, uh one of the songs, God Save Me. Uh like the lyrics is a uh, it's a good night, it's a good night to be high. Subway again, subway again, it's a lie. Therapy said, therapy said that I might do it again, do it again, and die. I'm a lost boy, I'm a lost boy. And I was like, ooh, lost boy, I fuck with that. And because like those that whole like chorus really is just, I don't know, it just kind of put a spark in me because I was just sitting there listening to music, trying to find something that would give me inspiration that I heard Lost Boy. I was like, I fuck with that. And then, uh, I don't know, it's just I I don't want to use directly Lost Boy because there's already Lost Boy. Right, okay. So uh, I just thought of something. I was just thinking. I just kept thinking and thinking. I was was like, I want to put Lost Boy in my name somehow. Okay. And then, uh, so you use the word lost boy, but you don't want to use lost boy itself because that's what's that been taken. Yeah. So, what does the X stand for? Like the, the X, X generation or the X? The X basically kind of stands for unknown, you know? Because, like, I, like I feel like I feel like how I, how I betray myself and how some a lot of people betray myself. Uh, people might like say exes or like some of my ex friends, everybody really thinks I'm kind of lost in my mind because I mean. Yeah, I, I fight with I fight with demons. I, okay. I fight with my I fight with myself. Just that, we're gonna say that that part for later in, in the show. Yeah. I like that you say you, you fight with demons. Yeah. We'll get back to that a little later in the show. So when you say X is the unknown, what do you mean? When, like when people say the un, when you say unknown, you mean that you get people different personalities of you. Like you yeah. just never know what you're gonna get that yeah. day. I mean by like what I mean by unknown is uh sometimes I feel like I'm unknown, you know. I feel like I'm very uh but from like lost boy, I take lost boy into like I feel like I'm lost as a person almost. And then wow. I put X is like unknown. I'm like, I don't know what you how should... I am. Like I mean, I know how I am, but also I don't if that if you know what I mean. Okay. And, and that just goes for all aspects of your life for us. What do yeah. you want to be in life outside yeah. of music? What do you want people to know you as outside of music? Yeah. So you say you feel you just lost. Okay, I understand that. So when when you when you tie it all together and you actually think about, you have Lost Boy, you have music. So music is obviously something that you're driven to do. You feel like that's your calling. Outside of being sure. lost and having the unknown, yeah. you just know that's one thing you can check off. That you know music is something that you like. So who who you inspire to be like? It could be a musician. It could be damn. It could be MGK. Yeah, you that's, a, that's a good but, that's a good question. Um, people who inspire me big is a uh, uh Billy. Okay. Billy, one of my he uh, I met Billy through uh through a lot of connections. Uh, someone uh, recognized me. Her name is uh Tabitha. Um, and uh, I just reached out to her and I was like, I need I needed some help because I was like, uh, I I guess you could say I was troubling a little bit and getting noticed. And then eventually Billy, we got connected to Billy, and then Billy really likes me. And uh, me and Billy got really close within this last year. And, I mean, I just worked my ass off to do it. And then I uh, finally got recognized by him. And, I mean, he's one of my really big inspirations because, I don't know, just the way the stuff he, he's mentored me through my music, told me how definitely. to do stuff. He definitely he definitely is a big part in that. And uh, someone I'd say I want to be like is either Bi- is like Billy. And uh, let's start artist-wise, I'd say Machine Gun Kelly. Okay. I mean, when when you, when you narrow this thing down, for us, who you want to be like, it could be anything, man. You can you can be who you can be whoever you want to inspire yeah. to be like. But when I think about who you want to be like, I think about not who they are as an artist. Think about something they do outside of what they do mm. that makes you say, "Wow, yeah. they're powerful." 
Yeah, they are very powerful. For sure. You I know what I mean? That. Like some people might say Barack Obama. Like people yeah. think that okay, he's the president. You want to be the president, but outside of that, Barack Obama changed so much stuff for people. I was like, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I say when you yeah. when you think about who you want to be like or who you aspire to be like, you said Billy. And you say Billy because simple fact is it his work ethic is it yeah his work ethic it... his work ethic is really good. Whenever I see him in the studio, I mean, me and him, whenever I was in Houston, cause uh like that's where I go to record and everything. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was in Houston, I mean, man, we went out and ate once. We we just went and got fast food. We just went and got fast food. That's all we did. That was dedicated to the grind. Yeah, huh? like I mean, every day we were sitting there writing, just writing, writing, and we were like. Fuck, man. Dedicated and, to the ground. Like we were, we we were just working our asses off, and I mean, just his presence in a case you could say is just very, uh, very good. Okay, it, it, he has that good energy about him, and I want to be like that. And like, I'd say someone I want to be outside of music, like like Machine Gun Kelly. I mean, he has multiple businesses, and I mean, just through his lyrics exactly. and stuff like that, he's helped so many people. I want to be like that because I want to save people's lives that are going through anything. I want to make music con like go and connect to people, stuff like that. That's what I want to be like. And I mean, I want to start my own like companies almost. I want to start like shit like either like, anything. If it's a coffee business, if it's a liquor business, no matter what it is, I I want to start some type of business to also for people to be like, ooh, I want to go buy that and use that every day. Okay. Type shit. I want to. Okay. With all that being said and all that, you know what I'm saying? You figure out. You know who you who is who inspires yeah. you who, you, who inspires you and uh you know who you like wanna be like, you know what I'm saying, from the musician side, from people that do everyday life for us, how hard they work, you know what I'm saying, with Billy and MGK. Yeah. You know what I mean? Through that process, you know, people gonna hit bumps and roads. <coughs> you right now, I mean, what are some of the hardest things, like hardest thing about doing music right now as a musician? Yeah. What's the hardest part about music for you? Shit, hardest part about music? Probably coming up with the music, I'd say writing writing in a ain't the big problem. I agree. With I'd that. say coming up with the music, cause like say whenever we were making our track, we were mm -hmm. trembling a little bit. We Definitely. like, cause like Definitely. um, I mean, we just gotta find that right beat, cause like I'm kind of like you, I need to hear that that like either say, cause like you and rap, and you need to hear a beat over and over and mm -hmm. over again. Definitely. I I need to hear like some type of guitar lick I can I can come up with or like some like. Or it's really whatever a chord progression. I don't care what it is, as long as I hear something first and I hear it over and over again. That's whenever I come in peace. I'm like, because I just take all my emotions, everything I've ever felt, everything I've been through, everything I put it down on a piece of paper, or I put it in my phone. I listen to that music and I just put lyrics into it. And then that, it's just like the hardest part for that would be coming up with the music. Because some, sometimes, I mean, sometimes a song for you and sometimes it ain't. Definitely, definitely, I definitely agree with that. So. Coming up with the music, that's definitely the hardest part about music. I thought the same thing because, I mean, music is definitely an art, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, everybody it's a really... could Everybody could pick up a pen and write yeah. and draw, but not everybody's shit going to look good. Let's be yeah, real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody could say something on the mic, but not everybody's shit going to sound good. Yeah. So, and I think your music sounds phenomenal, you know what I mean? Thank you. You thank definitely you. have the sound. I can see it on soundtracks. I can hear it on... You know what I mean? On uh, teenage movies, driving on highways and everyone's screaming. <laughs> I can hear all that. You know what I yeah, mean? Some so you games definitely, and shit. you definitely have the sound yeah. for it. So when you think about music overall as a genre, how has music influenced your life? Man, that's that's a really good question, mm. right there. Music, music really just gave me life almost. Cause like, I mean. Even in my darkest times, man, music really inspires me to get up and work my ass off. Because I hear music, like, ever since when I was a kid, the very first ever song I heard, I was like, my eyes just lit up. And I was like, man, I love this. And I was just like, I just kept doing it. And eventually, I just worked my ass off. And I would always be listening, watching the big artists on TV. I, 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 like, I'm like, and then I just almost said to myself, I'm like, I'm going to be that guy. One Definitely. Day. I told him I'm, I'm gonna be that guy because I, I it's not like the lifestyle the money I, I don't give a shit about that I want that because like music I live for this shit man like if I didn't have this I don't see a point like it's like music has just music is number one and it is like just it has inspired me to be a better guy to be a better person definitely and like in lyrics like I can hear lyrics and I'm just like Damn, that shit's relatable. Damn. You, right. you brought up a point. You said, man, when you first heard music, you lit up. 
So when yeah. was the first time you lit up on the mic? When was the first time you grabbed that mic <laughs> and dropped some dope vocals on it? Damn. 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 Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Damn. Um, shit, by the time I was eight, eight. by the time I was eight, you, I- You uh, remember what you dropped on the vocals? You remember what you said, what you were uh, talking yeah, about? Yeah, I, I started off as a DJ. Wow. I started off as a DJ and I was mixing and shit. <laughs> And I was just, I started singing along. I was like, I was like, yeah. And I started playing, uh, I started playing some music. I was just doing parties and shit. I mean, man, I got my first board. Like I, I worked my ass off and then we got my first board by the time I was eight and I started doing shows at nine. Okay. And that's whenever like in, around here in Nashville and, uh, and Hendersonville and all, anywhere around Tennessee, I was getting recognized as a DJ. I mean, I mean, I loved that, but also at the same time, I was like, I don't know if it's for me because I want to have that type of rock star status. I want to be up there, like having all that shit, seeing, looking in the crowd and seeing those people look up, freaking out over over me. Yeah. And I'm, but like, you want to vibe when everybody, yeah, I want to vibe. Yeah, I want to see that. And like, yeah, DJs, I mean, people freak out over them, but like, a rock star status is that rock star status where I can't, where I'm like, if I leave, hey, I ain't gonna be able to go nowhere. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Shit, like. I think that's definitely your future, man. I think that Thank your you. music is dope, man. I think that you bring that excitement out, and you can feel your music every time you touch the mic. I mean, it's caught my eye when I heard some of your music, and I was like, "Wow, this dude really is passionate about Thank you. his music, and not just doing music and thinking it's cool, but actually what he's saying in the music." I mean, so man, now, 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 you are you are lost boy. Actually, you, you figured that yep. out, man. You figured out music. You figured out where you want to go. You figured out also that music is your calling. Yep. Now you're here. Now music is taking off a little bit for you. Yep. Do you have any collabs? Do you have any collabs you want to work with? Let me start off. Shit. Do you have any collabs first? Any good collabs so yeah, far? Yeah, we got a good collab. We have, we definitely have a dope collab. We do got a dope we collab. Do, we got a dope collab as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was definitely some. That's definitely coming out soon. Yeah. But outside of our collab. Like have, that can't save me now. Hey, that, that's definitely one dope track. Yeah, that shit, that outside shit of is. that track, do you have any other tracks that you have any good collabs on? Or if not, do you have any people that you want to collab with? Yeah, I got some I got some people I want to collab with. Uh for one, I do really want to collab with uh I want to collaborate with Machine Gun Kelly. Definitely. Uh I would I would love to see how that played out. Uh because um out of anything, I would just want to like make a track with him because like his music and my music are very similar right and like i'm in his line with that right and uh i would definitely want to do that another artist i would probably want to collaborate with is a uh, one a uh, rapper around his name is ag hawk never heard of he, him you never heard of him he's he uh he uh, he's he's a uh, he's a national rapper okay and uh he um i've known him for like two years mm -hmm. i've known him for about two years um and y'all haven't touched the mic together yet mm -mm. Cause okay. I, he is a he is a rapper, but uh, we we might we might cook up a little something. Okay. I'm a, I'm gonna talk I, I'm I'm gonna talk to him. Okay, I mean, hey, ain't, ain't no need to having all this talent around the area and it's not working together. Exactly. No need to work apart. Not yeah. work together, get it all together. But like another artist I would want to work with, Travis Barker. Oh I yeah, I remember that Barker. guy. I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah, Travis I'd love Barker, to work definitely. with Travis Barker. That's the one guy I do remember. I do or, remember. Uh, so I would want to collaborate with probably some bands too. Okay. I would want to collaborate with like say Chemical Romance, My Chemical Romance. What's that? They uh, <laughs> how can I put them? Some people call them a pop punk band. They 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 could be. They they fall under that title, but like they uh they are crazy motherfuckers, man. Okay. They are some crazy so the genre of music you do is not just rock. It's punk rock. Yeah, the genre of music I do is like a uh, really um punk okay and, um, when you describe punk rock what's the difference between rock and punk rock punk rock has a lot of palm muting a really lot of, you know like how that how like sometimes on, my, on our track on my verse how it's like doo, 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 doo. Yeah, how's that how so that, explain like, to me what is palm muting like what exactly does that mean when people that 
there's gonna be a lot of people that look at this interview that doesn't understand what palm muting <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. is. You know what I mean? So what is palm muting? You palm muting is basically wherever you take your this part of the the uh, palm in your hand, right. you put it at the bottom of your guitar whenever you strum it, and you kind of almost mute the strings, but not fully, and then you just do whatever chord shape you do, and you get like a muted sound. It's the same chord, it's like the same sound, but it's, it's just muted. Little, it's a, a little distorted, muffled. like a little muffled, muffled. Okay. a little muffled, yeah. Okay. And like, uh, also, it's very fast. Okay. It's it can be really fast. Um, and also another thing to take into consideration with punk is the lyrics. And I mean, some people call it some people call it pop punk, just punk, emo, uh, all shit like that. I mean, that really depends on the lyrics. I mean, like take for a good, really good um, punk band would be Blink One Eighty Two, Blink oh. uh, Lincoln Park. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Jay Z did a song with Lincoln Park before. Yeah, yeah. I think he did. Yeah, he did a song with Lincoln Park. And uh, or like say um, Green Day. Some of those old bands, Nirvana, Nirvana's grunge. Okay. Nirvana's really grunge. Um, really, like some of those old bands back in the 2000s and some artists back in the 2000s, that was like punk era. Okay. And uh, I mean, I just want to bring that back. I Definitely. really want to bring that back. So you feel like music right now is missing that for you? It's not enough. I wouldn't say it's not missing it, but I would say I want to add more. Okay. I want I want to add way more because, like, I mean. In terms of lyrics, anybody can pull pull out a song, okay. and I mean, but like I want some people don't have the distance, like have the vision of the distance, right? And I and I and I know I, I want to I know where I want to go with this, okay. and I mean I know it comes with a lot of flaws, but I I don't care. It's like because like I mean, that's what I want in my life okay. is that, and um, also to take in consideration with punk. The lyrics, I mean, I'd say I'm more pop punk type kind of, but lot more on the depressed side too. Because, okay. I mean, take my take my lyrics and, I mean, like really any lyrics are like MGK's lyrics. It has a bunch of real shit in it. Right. And, and, and I'm happy that you was able to explain, one, what palm muting is. Yeah. Because you're using a lot of language, a lot of musical punk rock language that a lot of people don't know of that's going to watch yeah. this. So when you explain those type of small elements to the music that brings that part of music for you, life, it yeah. helps other people that doesn't know too much about yeah, punk rock understand yeah. the way the hand placement and the way the strings are played on their guitar to be to yeah. create that sound that gives you life that some may not understand. Yeah. With that being said, you have a great track out that's literally brewing upon us right now, House of Glass. Yep. How's it going? I'm excited to hear this one. I think this that song is going to be dope, man. I heard Thank you. a little bit of it. I'm saying it's produced by a great producer. You mentioned his name early. Billy. Billy, Billy Dorsey. Yeah, you know shout I'm out saying? Billy Dorsey. Definitely. He cooked up a great track there for you that not only was a great track, it actually was meaningful and actually felt like it was you when I heard it. You know what I mean? And um, so when you think about House of Glass, I heard that you wrote that song before and had to cut it and oh, make yeah. a whole new song. What inspired the second part of that song? The second rewrite of that song. That's a good ass. That's a good ass answer. I mean, not an answer. A that's question. a good question. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, definitely. I'm tweaking. Um, man, we listened to that shit because, like, whenever we were in the studio and Billy started baking on my ass. Okay. I mean, that shit. At first, I wrote my emotions because, like, that's what that's what they wanted, and I wrote my emotions down, and then yeah. uh, I also put something about my girl. Cause uh, I mean, my girl has helped me a lot, and we put like a whole, but like the way it was shaped, the song more sounded like a straight love song, mm -hmm. and I was like, nah, cause I got, I ain't gonna name names, but I got an ex, and this ex, we don't like her, no, and it you was know? almost like a fuck you and goodbye, and okay. but also I was also like, I really wanted to put in that chorus about my girl, but like the first one sounded like all just straight lovey-dovey and i was like in my music that don't happen often that's right. barely's happened right and i mean so i was like you know what this sounds almost a little corny i'm like let's take all that scrap that shit keep that chorus and keep keep the pre-chorus let's make a whole new verse and i we wrote that within two hours and i just i was like he was like what do you want? I'm like, I want grunge, motherfucker. I want, yeah. I'm like, I want grunge. Yeah, and definitely. Then, and then I just was sitting there. I'm like, 
all right, let me go through my notes and give yeah. you all this emotion I got. And he was like, never mind, we got a better track than before. So um, now the song is kind of mixed now. I would say it's damn yeah. if damn it found them, finally mixed and it's going through the mastering phase right now. Yep. What is your timetable for that release of that song? That uh until we get that fully mixed, I don't have an answer. It should probably be at least I know our songs get mixed and right. mastered because so that should be out probably around next month. Okay. And uh but like um uh, mine, my my single, it should once like cause like our priority is can't say me now right now. Cause okay. that that is like that is a good ass track. We have a good piece of music right there. Right. And um I for sure wanna release that first. Okay. Cause people, I mean, like, rap and punk. I mean, Lil Wayne had his phase. Mm -hmm. Lil Wayne had his phase. I mean, definitely, he had his phase. Did all right. And, that ain't his lane. Yeah, so that ain't did, his he lane. Did, he he did okay. But he, like, he, he exceeded the, a lot of people. I don't know the it. way the way we, I I saw it and like I can't I keep listening to it over and over again a lot. The way we made it work. Is amazing to me almost. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That track was definitely a different yeah, type of track. Yeah, because, uh, but like, and taking House of Glass, it should, once once this song gets released, I want to get it some publicity and all that. I want to get it some, I want to, I want to, I want to get it out there. Okay. And I want to see how I do. And then, uh, then I'm going to release House of Glass, which should be, shit. Um, about June, maybe July, maybe summertime, maybe 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 June, July, June, July, maybe House of Glass. We might get it if yeah. if if he's feeling good enough or generous enough to let y'all get that piece of oh, art. Oh no, no, I'm not, I'm for sure gonna let him hear it. I want it, I want it released. Okay. I, I want that. I want that really released. I do want that released. Okay. okay. So so now House of Glass is completed. Can't save me now. It's completed right now. Yep. Those two songs are cooked up by the best Billy Dorsey right now in Houston. Yep. Like, do you have any upcoming projects, EPs, singles, yeah. albums, I, uh, photo shoots? Like... So this, I've never publicly stated this, okay. but um, I am going to do an AP. Okay. I'm going to do a, probably about a five or six song EP. I'm going to try to. Cool. Uh, I'm going to talk to Billy about that. It probably, we talked about it before, but we never dead can set on it. And then me and my me and my people were talking a lot, and we were like, we doing this. I'm like, we doing this. So, uh yeah, EP is gonna come out because we need to. Get, I do have one project coming up. Uh, whenever I go to in, to Houston, my my girl got me Machine Gun Kelly tickets. Oh, she saw that on your Instagram. Yeah. That's big time. Yeah, and uh, shout out to this girl, whoever this girl is right now. <laughs> shout out to this girl. We heard about the girl about yeah. the track on the song. Yeah, you know I what I mean, she gets you MGK tickets. She Not watching, one, but she got you two before now. She That's wifey cool. material. Is this she the second ticket she, ticket she got for you? Or the first? She got two tickets. For yeah, that's the second ticket she got for you. I mean, this girl's unbelievable, man. If you, I mean, it ain't too many out here like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, I love her. I love so, that bitch. Cool. So you say you do have some uh, projects coming up, and uh, you have opportunity to go to MGK. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be at the Houston Texas. And we, Stadium. We, while we at Houston, uh, she already knows this, so I can say it. But uh, I'm I'm recording a song. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna record a song, kind of like a. I don't know if you heard it, Twin Flame. You know that one song that I be and that I be posting sometimes. Like I got six days, and so that's the last time. Six days. Mm -mm. But it sounds really good. Though. Yeah, some shit, some shit like that. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna record some, I'm gonna record something for, for like that, for like uh, just for myself, almost, okay. and her, and uh, also for other people who are in love. Okay. I wanna, I wanna record some type of at least one love song. I'm not okay. in my time here. Okay, sounds good. So now you say you say you had your projects. You say you do have uh, EP coming up, six track one. Yep. I mean, you know, say discuss that. You think it's the best move to make a six a six uh, track EP, which I think is smart as well too to get that yep. out there and then work towards an album. And I'm saying, um, do you plan to do photo shoots for like Can't Save Me Now? Yep. Either, anything like that? What is your vision for like the photo shoot of Can't Save Me Now? I want. To have a vintage look almost. Okay. Like um I mean me I want something that's like not too you know, like you know emo because I know I'm, I mean I know your style and I, I wouldn't say I don't want it too like dark. I would right. want it like me, yeah, dark. But but like you I at least want us to also be make making sure we're wearing like Billy said make sure we wearing the same type okay. of like, you know, like style at least to right. like, 
or like mix our styles in or something. Cause right. like like I said with you, like some like some cool ass vintage t shirt okay. like of a of an artist or something. Okay. And me, I, I that is like really any oh, most of my clothes are are vintage like okay. t- like music stick. Definitely. And, I mean, so it's like some sweatpants like this or like jeans or some. Okay. And uh, as we wrap this segment part up of the music portion of your life, yeah. as we end it off on that part, uh, do you have any like tours? So I know you got a couple songs coming. You think about doing AP? Do you plan to tour in the future? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got a real big vision for this. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, a lot of people told me, man, like they're like, man. Cole, you ain't gonna do shit. You ain't you like they're like you ain't gonna do it. And I'm like, watch me. I'm like, watch you me. Prove them. Cause like my plan. Yeah. Do you wanna know my plan? What's the plan? Let them know. Full plan. What I wanna do? I wanna get these songs released. I wanna get some at least a little bit of fame, a little bit. I wanna get that EP released and get some attention to me. And my whole vision here, I wanna play some one of the biggest bars down here. That's like a club. Like for like, I'm gonna have like I want to do that. Then I want to go to the musical auditorium, play that, get that that bitch sold out. Then I want to go to the Predator Stadium, sell that bitch out. Then I want to go it finally to the Big Dog. If I get a big ass album, best album I've ever made, I want to go to Nissan Stadium and sell that bitch out. Wow, that just gave me chills. I don't know why that shit just gave me chills. <laughs> I mean, shit. I mean, goddamn. That's that's a good because like vision. motherfucker, I want to be a sellout. I want to be a sellout here. And motherfuckers be telling me, you ain't about this. You ain't about that. I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I've been doing this shit since I was eight, man. And Definitely. I'm like, this shit is giving me life. I want to do this. And like, motherfuckers always like, I'm just like, I promise you. I'm like, no matter how hard I got to bust my ass, I'm going to do it. I'm like, because I want this. Wow. this. This is my life. And I want this to be my life. And I want to. Hey, I, I believe like, you, man. Hey, I you want, gave me chill. You said, I'm going to sell this bitch up. I'm going to sell this bitch up. Mother will feel me. Sheesh. Like, so, now it's my last question here. Yeah. When you when you make these music, this song, and make all these tracks, like, who do you want these tracks to touch? Like, is there an age group? Is there a male or female? Is there a gender? Is there... Yeah, I want, I want it to touch really... I wouldn't say exactly that. I want to touch people emotionally. Okay. I don't care who listens to it. I, I I want people to listen to it, and I if if they're going through anything, whether that's say like a, a loss of somebody they love, a breakup, a, a like a abusive parents, or like say just straight depression or like suicidal thoughts, anything. I want everybody to know like I want you because I I want to help them because I mean in my life I've I've I fought through stuff, and I mean, <clears throat> as you say that, yeah. I like you say that. So I get the point of who you who, who you're targeting. Yeah. So now, before you get to that, that's leading me to my next point. Yeah. Growing up now, like like how was growing up for you? You know what I'm saying? Like I know you talked about the music, and that's what made that life. But let's get to the root of it. Growing up, like like explain your life growing up. How was it? Hard, challenging, like grungy, like what is it? That's a uh... Good question. Um, growing up, it was hard. It was hard. I was alone a lot. I was alone a lot. Alone, like physically, or alone mentally, like in your mind. Man, kind of both. Okay. I mean, my dad, my dad had some struggles with okay. addiction, and uh, when I was five, uh, I lost him, and uh, I had to live without him for a little bit. I got him back. He got sober, but. Um, Still mentally, like I mean, growing up, I had my I had my first fight when I was like five, man. I had like it was a big fight and shit. I had to deal with a lot of people bullying me and shit. Yeah. And then I was like, and but like I was almost afraid of myself because I didn't want to hurt nobody because I had so much pain in me. Right. And plus, I was bigger than everybody else. Okay. And then um. I don't know, man. I just, I got, like, that fight happened, and I almost was like, I can't let, I can't let me be pushed around no more. So then I, I got a hold of myself, and I had to grow up at an early age, and I had to realize, I'm like, all right, I ain't got, I ain't got a big role model here. 
I need to be my own. I need to, okay. I need to do my shit. And I mean, we moved out of the house and then we went and lived. We jumped around a lot. Some, some good place, not so good places. And then we, then we settled in with my grandma and uh, we stayed with her for a little bit. And then my dad came, uh, came up and then he, uh, he got sober. Okay. And, uh, so what was the toughest battle you had to overcome? All the loss I've had in my life. A lot of the people that my either if if it's friends or some of uh, my family that I've had to watch die and some stuff like that. I mean, one of my friends recently just died of a of a heroin overdose, and uh, we weren't the tightest tightest, but we known each other for a minute. Okay. Like, uh, but like, I mean. So he, he you, was battling with some demons. So he was battling demons like that he had to overcome. Well, he died from that drug. You said, yeah. and, uh, did you battle with drugs or anything? Yeah. Okay. What was like? You mind like sharing like my, some my drug addiction? Yeah. Uh, my drug addiction was really bad at one point. I uh, all the depressing parts of my life really got me good and i mean i looked my addiction runs in my family and i mean i switched at first i was i was smoking uh fucking like i was vaping at first then it switched got bigger i went to weed and then eventually shit i couldn't handle shit with my mind anymore and then i went to pills and then that shit was terrible I mean, so was drugs a way that you cope with pain and stress? Yeah, drugs was. I mean, the other, the the only other thing that helped me is music and and like, then my girl came into my life and then I could talk to somebody that okay. wasn't I knew wasn't gonna push me away and le- and make me deal with my own problems by myself. Right. Because I mean, I never really had that emotional connection. I could go to anyone and be like, I'm not okay. Right. Type shit. I couldn't. I couldn't ever go to anybody. And I mean. I, uh, I, whenever she came into my life, I had a home almost that I never had. Okay. So before she came into your life, how can I put this? How often was you partaking in like drugs and things every like day. that to every day? Every single day. How many times a day at this point? Uh, I was, I'm not on pills anymore. I've sobered up of that shit, but, uh, I still battle with it. I do still battle with it, but I stay sober for the most part. But I was um okay. Oh, 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 slow down, slow down now. You say you're playing a little bit of words now. You said um you're you're sober, right? You're sober, yeah. but you battle with it. So I if you're battle. sober, you're completely sober. So when you mean you battle with it, mean that you have thoughts of relapsing on it? Yeah, all the time. I, I okay. not all the time. I do. It's like whenever, cause like I I do struggle, okay. but like um. In terms of uh, I just sometimes I do feel like giving up with that, and I'm just like giving up with the uh, sobriety. Sobriety, yep. I mean, yeah, I still, I mean, yeah, I still smoke weed and shit. I mean, oh. like that shit's just because I mean I haven't done it, and alcohol is really bad for me too. Okay. But like what you said back to your question with uh, how many times a day I was doing it, man. I was waking up in the morning taking three Xanax a day. And I would that that breakfast, was just lunch and dinner. Mm-mm-mm. That's when I first woke up. I'd take three. I'm just saying, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Three there, three at lunch, three at dinner. Mm-mm. I, I mean, I would be. I'd take three when I first wake up. I wouldn't eat. Then I'd just go do whatever I do. I get sleepy, start dozing off a lot, and I just didn't give a shit about anything. And then whenever that high came down, so that was about four or five times a day. And I would then then I'd finally go to sleep and. So how many times did you so you take them in doses of three pills a time? Almost. Okay, so how many times in a day do you take your doses of three? So I'm, are you looking at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, man, three, six, nine, which is nine pills a day, or do you look at how many a range of how many times you take them a day? I it really varies on whatever how long the high lasted. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, say if I, I took them and they didn't work. I would take more. And that's the thing that really got me bad is because whenever I took one, I mean, I, I'm willing to admit this. I mean, only one of my parents know this. My my father don't, but I, it's time it, it's time I open up about it. Um, I was at a party once 
and uh, I did. I got laced, and I. Uh, it was with fentanyl. It was a, it was a Xanax. They said that he said it was a Xanax, and uh, I. Uh, I don't know how to describe that feeling, man. I mean, I, I felt something within the first eight seconds. I'm telling you. I'm like, laughing because it, it, it's scary, man. Like, like, I'm sitting here like, he like I'm already drunk as hell, high as hell. He comes over, and he's like, hey. I'm like, he's like, I heard you like pill. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what's about it. And then he's like, here, you want these? I'm like, I'm like I'm, I can't thank him anything. I'm yeah. just like, fuck it. I'm like, give me that bitch. Then he gives me one. He has one. I take it. And then within like eight seconds, I'm like, what the fuck? Something don't feel right. And then I try to get up. I'm out. Out like that. And I don't know how I got saved, but someone did save me. And I mean, I woke up, foam coming out my mouth, and just, man, it. It, that's whenever I realize I'm like, this is serious, man. I, I need to kick the drugs. Wow. And I mean, if I ever did relapse, it'd be bad. It'd be bad. But like, I mean, I'd really try to fight it. I, I really am trying to fight it. And I mean, with it right now, I mean, a big inspiration for me to keep going out there is my girl. The, I don't know the way she keeps talking to me with it. And the way she is, she just gets, she's like, she's like my drug. Okay. She, she's like, she, she makes me feel all the warmth and happiness I never had as a child. Mm. And she makes me feel that. And, um, I mean, I can talk to her about anything, man. Okay. And, um, really just, I can open up because I, I never really had anybody I could open up to. I mean, like, yeah, I had people who said they were there. They're like, you shouldn't be scared. I'm like, but I am. Mm. That's deep, dog. That's deep. So now you see you had people in your life that was, I would say, there, but they wasn't there. Yeah. So now you, LBX, you, you built this brand for yourself. Who, like, what type of people that is allowed to be in an LBX and your circle? Who is LBX allowing in his circle? People who were there for day one. Right. Who believed in me day, the first day I even picked up a DJ boy and mm-hmm. I heard like in the day like I picked up a guitar I mean like whenever whenever people stand by you for years you almost get connected to them like a brother way right. take, take like the guy you met Garrett right. G- Garrett Garrett's one of my men yeah that is my homeboy that's like that's my brother man I'd do anything for him I mean, if it came to him getting shot, I mean, I'd take a bullet for him. Definitely, definitely. I mean, he's definitely. like, he like, I protect him. I, I for sure protect him, no matter what. If you pressing up on him, you pressing up on us. Definitely. Like it don't, like it don't matter what what it is. I mean, Garrett for sure. He's he's in my circle. I want people like that. Billy, you. Okay. Uh, I want and like let's say like people who I want in my circle. Other musicians that are really influential for to me. So like any like anybody that I could like become friends with really like either it, I don't I, it don't matter if it's Lil Huddy if it's Travis Barker if it's um Machine Gun Kelly if it's anybody really with that definitely that's deep man I appreciate you saying that that's that's yeah, real no man because I mean I feel like when you as you keep growing you will need certain people in your uh I feel like certain people for you you will need certain people in your circle to continue to help you grow as you continue to grow. Yeah. So with that being said, is that like, what are some of your dreams and aspirations, man? Like that aspirations? you hope, aspirations that you have for yourself, for yourself, like some of your dreams and stuff that you just hope to happen for you. Like it could be musically, it could be just in general life. It could be hit the lot tomorrow. Man. It could be whatever, man. That's I'm, I'm happy you asked me that. Um, I must have all the right questions for you today. I must have everything that you're thinking about. Yeah. Uh, Damn, there's a. Let me find a way to piece that. I want, for one, I want to save people. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the show. I'm D Gray here, podcast host. 
Shout out to the product sponsors over at Slate Milk. Slate up. Make sure you get you one of these. Man, go to SlateMilk.com to purchase one of your mocha lattes. One of the best everlasting tastes. Back to the show for Lost Boy X. Like, I want to, like, if I got that type of mindset where I'm like, I want to take everybody's pain and put it on me and let them be happy. Damn, that's deep. And like, I mean, and like, I mean, I got that vision of me. I'm like, I want to be on that stage every night, getting off that tour bus every single, every single morning, being asking myself, where the fuck am I at? I'm like, where the hell am I at right now? Yeah. And I go out and I see millions of fucking fans sitting there screaming as soon as I look out the window. Right. Or like as if they just see my tour bus or see my band. And I mean, I would just, I want to do that. And I want to be out, get up on that stage. And like my number one goal, well, I got two. Sell out, sell out that Nissan stadium, sell out Titan stadium, sell out my hometown stadium and get a get grins. Right. And like, I mean, I want to be up there and be like, there, like my manager come and tell me or something. There, there could have been a kid in the audience tonight that wanted like, I don't know, like kill himself until a song you wrote touch him. And I like, I want, I just really want to save people, man. Cause like, I mean, I know what it's like to go through hell and the hell and back. I mean, like some of my closest homies that were some of my really good friends died on me. And like they just, it's whether that be killing themselves, or that be drugs, or that be anything, or getting drunk. Like I said, drunk and driving on the bank, crashing just to fill again. That was me. And I mean, I don't want other people to go through that. I know people are going through that, and I'm not like the biggest artist right now. I just, just I want to get that big, and I want to help people right. that are struggling through that, and be like, damn. I have something to live for. Man, that's dope, dog. That's dope, man. That you that you have that mindset. I yeah. think that I think that for you, man. I think that your music is definitely giving Thank that you. off. Uh, especially when you, your music is deep. You talk about a lot of yeah. deep subjects in there. It's all yeah. related. It's all the same, but it's all different concepts. I mean, it's all different ways you attack yeah. that way. Like it could be like say one song I'm talking about heartbreak and all that shit. How bad? Like I'm like. Sit, like I'm sitting there screaming, yeah, about how yeah. she left and shit. Yeah. And we're like talking, like say, whether that's a like say emotional problems, like say like someone's bipolar is hell. I mean, like I'm bipolar. I have a lot of mental problems and I just want to put all that in songs and just put all that out and let people hear that. Wow. That's deep, man. So let's put this in uh, put this perspective. You sold out Nissan Stadium. You sold out all the bars. Yep. You sold out the prayer stadium. You sold out the auditorium. You sold yeah. all these places. Now you the big dog. Now yeah. your pockets, now your pockets. You can't even sit down. I'm just so big. Yeah. What you doing with your first check when you get it? Buy my mama a house. Mm. Why buy your mama a house? What that mean to you? Because she was always there. And I want to give her, I, I'm going to automatically buy my mama a house. To make sure my parent, my, my make sure my family is taken care of, and then I'm gonna if anybody's in debt, I'm like, that's don't worry about it, or anything like that, and then I'm gonna buy me a house. Definitely. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna need that. Uh, I don't know whether it's here, or L.A. I don't give a shit really. Probably not L.A. because that uh, I am. L.A.'s L.A. L.A.'s but, L.A. I mean, I just. I want to give my mama that one house she always wanted. She either wants some something on the beach that's real nice and secluded, or somewhere in probably the Virginia mountains, sitting there in a log cabin. Virginia mountains. Yep. In the state of Virginia. Wow. So, or that's like probably different. in the mountains here. Okay. Uh, yeah, Gallenberg. It, it don't matter. Gallenberg. Yeah, Gallenberg's <laughs> a real nice place. I love okay. Gallenberg. Okay, I went to Gallenberg one time. It was cool. Yeah, she she like some wants, mountain lines out there somewhere. She, she wants some of that old timey shit. Okay, and I want to give her that. Cool. As we switch topics, now we get to your lifestyle, man. Now, you lifestyle. Got, now, now you got now you got the money in your pocket. You sold out Nissan. We said now you now you living. So, what type of clothing brands you into now? Now you got to we got to figure out what you're rocking on stage now. Yeah. What's what's your what's your dream fit to put on? Like what you want to wear? Ah, shit. Like, get a spicy get, now. give me, give me a, give me, give me a, a, a example for that. Like, where am Brand. I? 
uh, oh man, it, it, just, I don't know how to put it. Like you just put your Nissan drip on. Stadium type man, shit. Man, I'm talking about the big dog oh, stuff. For that man. shit, I'm a hell motherfucker. I like I want in my in my show. I want to come out in some like big ass fucking like pink coat shit like that. I want to have like a chain link that's like sparkled up fucking tank top type shit. Mm-hmm. I'm be all tatted up. Then I want on all my shit. I want these bitches to be big ass boots that. And like I want, I want some good ass jeans. So you're looking at like some um, rock star shit, rock star type of vibe. I'm thinking about the shoes. The, I want uh, chains coming down for me. What kind of shoes though? The boots. You say the boots. Okay, I got Doc Martens, Rick Doc Owens. Martins. That's what it is. Doc yep. Martens, Rick yep. Owens. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. With the ripped up jeans and and like I wouldn't say exactly. I don't know if I put like ripped up jeans. I'm probably some. It depends on what I want because I want studs in that bitch, and I want like um shit ton of rings on me. Like, I mean, I ain't afraid to do it. I mean, like, hell, I'll fucking pull that Motley Crew type shit. Wow. Hey, that, that, that's a different type of swag right there. Like, I want, like... Well, you, do you think that swag can make it to the Met Gala? What you mean? Oh, never mind. So, Met Gala is like it's like a runway where, where, where people wear, like, all the top clothes. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's why I said. You think you guys can make it? That probably make it to the Met Gala with yeah, that. You might like, be your own stylist. Like, I, be, I want to walk down that... One fashion show I'd want to go on Dolce & Gabbana. Ooh, Dolce, okay. I want to D&D, walk down man. that bitch. Okay. Or Versace's. Okay. I love sweet. Versace. You no, know, no, just being around where you had to have a certain type of look. You know what I mean? Because, like, I mean. You tied it up with all these chains. Ah, I think they would look elsewhere. Yeah, I would want, like, <laughs> a. Like, there, like I remember there was this uh, Dolce & Gabbana piece that was a really nice-ass chain. It was like this. Uh, it came down about right here. Like a choke. Oh, like a choker, yeah, and it had uh, diamonds and shit right there, okay. and it locked in the back, and like it had like this piece that would hang down. It's crystal, mm. and it has spikes coming out of it. And I was like, that that shit's hard, and I was like, I could imagine that, and like I mean, I want to sit there and like just come out on stage glittering almost. Definitely, definitely. So, what's the most expensive thing you've worn so far, and what's some what's the most expensive thing ah, you're playing to wear? Shit. Um, What's the most expensive thing you've worn as far? Pure Atlanta. Pure? Okay. Pure is definitely a good spot. I like Pure. It's in Atlanta. You got Atlantic Mall. Huh? I got... Uh, Pure out in Atlantic, Atlantic Mall, correct? I got... I went, I went to Houston's Pure. Oh, you went to Houston's Pure. Okay. Uh, okay. Man, that mall's big as hell. Oh, I heard. I heard. That mall's huge. I can't wait to get down there yeah. to Houston to get and to try it out myself. Man, so. they got they got Versace. They got Pure. They got Dolce & Gabbana. They got everybody. That's the Galleria down in uh, Houston, correct? Yep. yep. yep Houston's definitely. an amazing city. Shout out Houston. Definitely. I'll be making my way there uh, hopefully in like uh, three weeks. Yep. But what, what's something you can't live without? Music. Music? I, I kind of assume that. I kind of thought like it could be there, something there's, different. There's two things: music, and probably my girl. Okay. Because I mean, she's like. So you can live without your mama? Oh fuck no! Uh, fuck no! Uh, hey, hey. Fuck hey, no! I had, to, I had to make sure. Fuck so, no! So fuck music, no. your girl, and your mama. And mama. Okay. So what's your dream car? Shit, you like muscle cars? I love muscle cars. I'm a big Challenger fan. Challenger. Love Challenger. I I, I, I want a Challenger. Cool. I would want a Challenger. Or or a or a Hellcat whip that hoe, and I or I would want uh. Whoa 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 whoa! You see, you were like a hell. You see, you were like a Challenger or a Hellcat. Yeah. Well, a Hellcat is in a Challenger. No, the the model of a Hellcat. Oh, okay, you want the model? You yeah. see, you want that big engine. Yeah, that I want. Big I want that. Inside want, of that Challenger. Yeah, I want. I want to hear that revving up. That whenever you going fast, like I want to yeah. hear that shit. And uh. Me personally, I could say F a Hellcat. I want a Demon. Or Demon, yeah. Or I would want. Um, I'm talking about that's a that's illegal to drive with it. And like, damn it, I forgot, bro. They fucking they they uh discontinued Huracans, the Lamborghini hur- Huracans. Oh, they discontinued. They, I I, I, I didn't know I that is one of them bitches. Hey, I didn't know that. Hey, like they discontinued them, and I was wow. like, fuck. So what's one place you hope to visit, man? If you haven't visited so far, what's your dream place to visit? Let's just put our imaginary minds on and just close our eyes and just see think about stars. this. See the stars. The stars? The sea of the stars. The sea of the stars. What you place know that? that? What place is called the sea of the stars? I don't think nobody knows that. I don't. It's uh, some place in like a, a private like type island that people can go to. And it's like a big ass resort. And at night, the sea, like the sea, the waves, 
there's algae in the sea. Okay. And it glows and it looks like stars are in in the sea and it comes up and you can touch it and it's it's, it's cool. Damn. And that's like the water is clear as day. <laughs> Shit, that gave me tears. Like, like so yeah. what state is that? Like what country? Like that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, oh, what? Shit, I can look it up. <sighs> Damn, oh, that bitch up on. You gotta hit the Hey Siri on this one. Hey Siri, where's the Cedar Stars? Where? So he said the Cedar Stars, like you can the look. Maladies. The Maladies. Ma huh? The Maladies. Okay, cool. Nice. Right there, that's what them bitches look like. Wow. I'll make sure I show you a picture of this. Anyway, as we move to your social yeah. media and we just put our minds into uh, the Maladies, Let's see the stars. Uh, now, now you made this podcast feel that much more like I'm floating right now. So yeah. now we're on a social media topic, man. I know social media is very important to you, and very important yep. you broadcasting your brand, your music, who you are, what you want people to know you as. So right now, you know, I mean, you got about 500 followers on Instagram. It's pretty low, and pretty especially low. for what you expect you want out of it. You know what I mean? And it's going to continue to grow as you continue to grow. Yeah. So what's your favorite social media platform? Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Shit. Bebo, um, MySpace. I'd say I'd say Instagram and Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, or and TikTok. And TikTok, okay. Those three, those three are like some of the biggest ones right now. Now Besides, Snapchat, and also you, Snapchat kind of died out a little bit. Snapchat's kind of lowered down. It depends on who's using it. Yeah, yeah, it depends on who's using it. But like, you don't see the big ass stars using Snapchat. But I have to disagree with that. Because I follow a lot of stars on my on my tic, on my uh, Snapchat. No, nah, I mean that's like, a lot of guys posting a lot of things. They're doing some video games. Like, but oh, so, so. I, I get that. But like, I mean, like in terms of like this type of status, the shit that's on Snapchat is like podcasts, and they have like stories about what's happening. Like, take like a uh, any news that's happened. Like, say um. I can see what you're getting at. Okay. Yeah, that because like you can see all the stories and shit and like people, Snapchat is more currently what they're doing on a daily life yeah, yeah, versus yeah. Instagram and Snapchat. And Instagram and is everything that's fucking happening. And they from yeah. okay. And like and Twitter. I, I like that you say that. Yeah. I like that you say that because it, it put things in perspective that Snapchat is more. How can I put this? Snapchat is a way that you show your day to day life. Like I just woke up. Ah, yeah. And you record that versus when people on Instagram. They, they kind of, yeah. They kind of show. I say they kind of show like a lot of different things on the Instagram when they're trying to promote things. So when I say that, do you feel social media brainwashes you? Not me. I don't let it. I, I, how, I, how, how do you feel like you don't let it brainwash you? How do you feel like that? Because one, social media is a way to. I would say social media is a way to convey a message to someone. Yeah. Right or wrong? You agree with that? Yeah, I, I agree with that. It has brainwashed them. So if, if you feel like it doesn't brainwash, do you look at your, you have to look at your social media platform and say, wow, I like what he's wearing? Oh, yeah. Like some, I've done that with like uh, some like fashion shows and shit or like take Machine Gun Kelly. I'm like, I fuck with that outfit. But like in terms of like when I'm like, does it brainwash me? I don't let that shit brainwash me. I'm like, I would love to look like that and shit. But like me, I stay that in my lane. Okay, I understand it. Because I know, you know, you know, a lot, a lot of things like depression, a lot of shit is real in this world. And I yeah. feel like a lot of things do stem from social media, from people being talked about on social media, from people wanting to live a certain way, but they can't afford yeah. it. But they seeing this girl, this model, she wants to look like every day and yeah. she can't look like that. So her self-esteem is just going bottom, yeah. just rock bottom. My, self, my like, self-esteem is like, I mean, my self-esteem, I... I mean, me personally, I don't think I look good. I don't like my own self, but like also at the same time, I'm like, I don't let other people, what other people say affect me. I'm like, why don't you think you look good? And why don't you like your own self? I mean, man, my insecurities are big. I mean, I, I mean, I don't like my face. I don't like my body. I hate my body. I mean, I don't, I just, I hate like a lot of things about me. I hate my, I hate my emotions too. I hate how, um, uh, how like some shit whenever I like I mean my bipolar a lot I hate that because like I've hurt people in the past I feel like I've I can hurt people in the past that like gave a shit about me and now they're like I don't give one flying fuck about you you have too many emotions I can't deal with you because like I mean I have a lot of trauma as you can probably tell I mean I I got bad trust issues I just am not comfortable with my own body I mean and like someone who has helped me with that is her and like uh. Probably like 
music too because I can feel like I can talk about that shit. Wow, that, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Jesus Christ. So like, is it uh, like, what do you wish you could switch about your body? Man, I didn't even. Shit, have, I, didn't, I, I mean. I wasn't expecting this, so now I'm kind of freestyling this. So, yeah, what is something you wish you could change about your body to make you feel more comfortable? I'll be as big as I am. Big where? I mean, that's a couple sit ups and a couple jogs away, brother. You looking sharp. Like, what are we talking about here? This? I mean, that's a, a same thing. A couple sit ups, a couple jogs, a couple jumping jacks, and you you in shape. <laughs> like, yeah, and my point I'm making about that joke is you don't have far to go from if you're trying to look skinny. Yeah. So, like, is it the hair? You wish the hair was more sharper? You wish you can get a fresh cut? Like, mm -mm, mm -mm, not I my mean, hair. My, hair, my hair's my money maker, my guy. Uh, I mean, braid it up. I mean, it, it's ways in life you try to It used things. to be braided. It used to be braided. My hair was really long at one point, and I was like, all right, I got I got to do something with this. Okay. Because, like, it was down, like, right here. Hey, and hey. then I put that bitch up in braids and put that shit back. Okay, okay. Man, at the end of the day, man, you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. You just got to put your mind to it and make sure you – if you want to lose weight, get right. You know, ain't gonna do it sitting on the couch. You ain't gonna do it sitting yeah, in the studio all day. Like exactly. you gotta get your ass up and run, man. Get right and then get back to the studio. Also, how much do you spend? But like, how much a day like do you spend on social media? It's like what? How much? Like how often? Hours, minutes, seconds? Do you spend usually? You think on social? Sometimes, media? I uh, I'd say about two hours. Sometimes two hours a day. Mm -mm. Oh, I must say that's totally false, I think. Like, I mean, like, I look like, yeah, whenever it's like it's real late at night and I'm about to go to sleep, shit, probably five hours. Five Damn. Because, like, whenever I'm about to go to sleep and shit. TikTok catch you every time, huh? Yeah. Oh, my whenever, God. Whenever TikTok I mean, you be. Like, motherfucker, I fell asleep last night at, like, five in the morning just sitting there just. And then eventually one second over, I look over, I'm knocked the fuck out. Wow. But, like, I mean. But like in terms of um take like actually taking time out of my day to go look, I mean, unless I'm in the car or something. Or like if I'm I ain't gonna lie to you. Social media, I mean, if you had to count how much social media I'm on all day, it's twenty five hours in a day. Just thinking about it. You you pull like every five minutes to at least look for at least twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. So I maybe mean, you add all those minutes up, like I mean it's now when I mean, you think about it, I'm thinking about the grand scheme, I would say I at least spend fifteen hours, fourteen hours a day on social media. Yeah. The reason why I said it because when you got to put the minutes together. If I take 20 minutes here and then put my phone out three hours later and do another three hours or two hours, you got to add what you just did before. And yeah. you think about all those hours a day, bro, I'm spending at least 10 hours a day on social media. Like me, I mean, I do be posting shit a lot. I mean, I be posting shit like okay. I'm doing about my music a lot and like say like behind the scenes of what we were doing. Like I post pictures and all that. So like in terms of that, because like that shit – Whenever I get all the editing right on my part and like the stuff that I'm doing, if if I want to edit anything, shit, then I'll be taking like about about a couple hours and because like I want to make sure it's right or like say if I'm making like a story and like saying when I was coming here, motherfucker, I took like five times trying to get it right coming yeah. here. I was like to get like say like, hey, we coming to talk to your topics, such. So you heard, you know you it. <laughs> so yeah. So last question, man. If social media happens to go extinct, well, not even extinct. Say if social media went away for a year. Do you feel like, like your communication with other people was sore? Like you wouldn't be able to communicate with people no more. Does that include texting? I would say just think about back in the day growing up with no phones. Oh yeah. Like how would you how would you connect to people if you didn't have socials? Shit, you would just have to make a name for yourself from there. In that case, work your ass off, dude. Like I'm I mean, thinking about like maybe. Do you think I, when I think about that question, I think about for myself is that let's let's put it like this. Oh shit. Let's take NWA story. They worked their asses off up in Compton. What? They worked their asses off in Compton. And then, uh, shit, I forgot their uh, their manager's name that came and recognized Easy. Uh, Gary. Gary, yeah, Gary. He uh, came and, like, Easy worked his ass off. They were going doing shows and everything. And, like, Easy said he was doing it just because. I mean, he started, he wasn't even a rapper at first. Right. He's in there. Cruising down the street in my six one, they started dying. That like they started laughing. Then Easy got that shit on beat, and Dre was like, "Damn, put out a good ass record." And they just kept working their asses off, and eventually, because there wasn't no social media back then, there wasn't. I so mean, my thing is how I look at it too is like basically, you know, a lot of people can connect with people without having to leave their house. So that's what yeah. your socials for. 
far as relationships, far as with brands, clothing brand, everything is so yep. in the house. My thing is now even music is all in your on your phone. So yep. my thing is you take away social media platforms and things like that. That will force us as humans to have to go outside and have to do old school stuff, which is have yeah. to talk to people. You have to basically walk outside with your resume. You have to basically have your CD. Be, yeah, exactly. You have to go back so, down, say like back in Nashville about like before social media got big, motherfuckers, cats were down there in the street selling they, they own record. They're like, yeah. here, buy my album. Or like, so here, what, what take you $5. Think, what you think your, your, your way of connecting with people would be? Would it be just you going out to bars and just talking to people? Well, I would do probably if I didn't have no social media, I'd go down – Probably go to some of the bars. Probably go down, play like wherever. Even if it's in the street, if it's somewhere, I don't give a shit where it is. I'll be like any place you I you can get me in. I'll take it. Definitely, definitely appreciate that. Now we're gonna switch over to video games. Video games. Are you a big gamer? You a gamer? Uh, kind of died down more. I've always focused on music. Now I used you to be a big gamer. I mean, what system? Xbox, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and uh, I used to play uh, the Wii a lot. I okay. remember that I was Xbox 360. Wii. I'm, I, pl I play Xbox. Okay, what's your favorite video game? Ah oh, shit! Uh, I got about like four. Uh, back when Fortnite came out, I was a big, I was big in Fortnite. Fortnite I love is a great Fortnite. game. But I use, uh, now it's I'd say GTA, uh, Dead by Daylight, Rainbow Six Siege. And uh, probably Ark Survival of all. Rainbow Six Siege. Well, you know some. Well, you know some. If you could be a gamer character, what game would you see yourself playing in? Shit, GTA. Me being a dumbass with my voice. Wow. Or that or that or uh, VR. Okay. Make some VR videos. Okay. Or um, virtual reality games. Yeah, that okay. or I would, like. There's three I could see that either GTA, VR, or. Um, uh, six inch. Okay, what's the first? What's the first system you ever had? First PlayStation. The original Xbox. Wii. Original Wii. The wow. old ass Wii. Wow. And then and then and then I went to Xbox 360. Got cussed out almost every game I played a COD Black Ops 2. Mm, wow. Because I was one of the, the little kid. And then you finally wanna, got. You, wanna, you was one of those motherfucking kids that be on there talking that shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. Man, fuck you. What's wrong with you? I, I, shit, let me come through this goddamn screen and choke your little ass out. <laughs> you take your ass to sleep. You got school the board. It's four in the morning. It's almost like, man. Yeah, I ain't going to say that over here. <laughs> anyway, man. Yeah. Yeah, so, last topic of the day, man. I hear you talk about your girl a lot. You love yeah. your girl. You I love, love my her. Girl. She changed her life. She then gave you a secret potion to save your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. So, you say, so I'm assuming right now you're currently in a relationship. What's the what's the longest like the longest time span you've been in a relationship for? Two years. Two years. But this one, I mean, I've known her. I've known my girl since June of last year. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I mean, man, we met on. Uh, do you know what Amigo is? Christian Amigo? No, Amigo. Like that shit where you can go online and you can just like, like Tinder. She know she know what it is. Like Tinder? No, it's not like Tinder. It's a uh, blackfeelmeet.com. <laughs> Oh, eHarmony. E-Harmony. Nah, e -harmony. E -harmony. Nah, I got bro, you, eHarmony. Nah. You keep taking the pictures like this. Nah, fool. <laughs> oh, man. Amigo. Amigo be like, you. if you bore, you can go on there and you can skip through people and you can just talk to people if you bore. And um, I met her on Omegle. And originally, whenever we met, like, I had my hair down in my face like this. I was looking at my phone. And then she was like, she was like, hi. And then I looked up and I was like, hi. And then she, she, she looked at her friend who was her best friend. She was like, oh my God. Oh, so this is video chat? Yeah. Amigo. Oh, that's the one that just like literally you make the videos. Yeah. And just pop up yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And she looked at her best friend. She went, oh my God, Nana. And, and I, and then I was like, what? I was like, hi. And then she started, she, she was sitting there all blushing and shit, being all, being her cute ass self. And then. And then I mean your boy oh, your, your boy planning. snuck a, your boy snuck his way up. Your boy snuck his way up. And then I mean we dated for a little bit. We we were we were on and off a little bit. And then like for about three months we were flirting big. And then uh and then and I would always be fucking with her and shit. And one night, I mean, it was a uh, November it was in November and I was just you know what, fuck it. I was like, fuck it. And uh so you guys, can you be my girlfriend? 
Nah, nah. I was fucking with her at first, cause like I would always be like, "Yo, to Sarah, what will you?" And she's like, and then she goes, "You always do this." I went, "All right, you want me to change that?" And then she was like, "You ain't gonna do it. all right. Will you be my girlfriend?" And she, and then she was like, and then she's like to pause for like twenty seconds. She was like, "What? I want that? Grab you that can right there, man. Hey. Let's take a shot on that one, cause hey, hey, take a shot of this good slate milk. This your brand." Like this shit. Hey, slate milk, baby. Powered by slate. Mm. Mm. That bitch good. Definitely. Definitely. We've been talking for a while. It's the best way to brainwash our throat. And like, mm. I mean, whenever, I, and then after we got together, I, we fly her ass out to come see me. Definitely. And I mean, that shit was, there was a lot of emotion with that. So you said fly her out. Where did she live? Cali. Ali, that's why you say Ali. Okay, cool. So, have you ever had dealt with any like heartbreak? Like, oh fuck yeah, Ooh. oh fuck yeah. yeah your boy, a, your boy, yeah. been heartbroken. You had a sip and take a sip on that one. Man, I hate you. Mm. Um, I'm not gonna name names, but one bitch did fuck me up really good. Mm. Um, that one, you, you know, you remember her? What I was talking about? Okay. Um, we uh. We got way too close. Too quick, huh? And yeah. And, I mean, we dated for for a good while. And, uh, I mean, she was really controlling. I mean, she tried to change me as a person. She tried to change me as, as like, as who I am as myself. And I just was like, I mean, I wrote an entire thing. That's where House of Glass came from. I came from, right, like, right here, man. All, all of that. Like all that, I just wow. came. From, all that came from. Yes, and it's screenshot. Like we don't need that one. We gotta put. It, can we, can we like, put that on? Like put it on the What? What do you mean? See that? Like read that? That's a lot, man. Uh, can, we, can, can we get a screenshot of that? To, uh, it has her name up in it. I'll I'll, I'll blur I'll blur her name out because I don't want I don't want yeah, no more problems. Name out. We just want to hit. We just want to see. I'll, the I'll blur up. That. I'll blur up her name and then I'll send it to. You. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. Well, we gonna get the lyrics and. uh the uh, I have the original lyrics of House of Glass. Okay. And uh I mean all of that was like all so, of all so of that heartbreak this. that heartbreak made you want to kill yourself? Yeah. Like how did you think about killing yourself? Like literally just taking some rack of Xanax? Uh I, I, I've tried that before, it didn't work. Um I've I've uh I I don't wanna get into too much detail because I don't want feds coming from my ass being like, hey. Y'all actually need to go to a mental institution because I ain't suicidal no more that much. But, <laughs> um, yeah, man. Hey, I hey, mean, I hey, you doing awesome for I, yourself. I, I mean, I've uh, I I'll just say more than five times. Tried okay. more than five times. Okay. And uh, none of them worked. And obviously. I'm assuming the music is help. What helps you recover from that? Yeah, okay, cool. That my girl. Okay. When you're in a relationship, like, what's some of the things you like to do in a relationship within you and your girl? Like, what do you like to do, like? Oh man, you gave me that look, dude. I don't even know what to ask. I don't even want you to answer that. Um, it could be. A- we do. Rating. We do be. Well, I mean, we. One of the like we like to do that old type shit because like whenever people say people dating nowadays, they are like, all they want to do is have sex. They don't. They they ain't be like they they don't go like me. I want to take her out to the movies. I want to go buy this girl a nice dinner. I want to go take her to the sunset and watch. Like watch the stars type shit. I want to sit there and watch the sunset go down. I want like I want to give this girl the love that she deserves and type Is that shit. A song? Oh, that was, oh, it sounded like you was spitting. Shit, sorry. I, you know, <laughs> it sounded like you was like I want to give this girl the stars. I want to. You know what I'm saying? I thought you was spitting some bars. I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was House of Madness. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, nah. Nah, I was a glad there was a remix. House of Madness. In this bitch. <laughs> Slow down, fella. We yeah. get it. Nah. Um, you ever took a girl to go to crowd? Huh? You ever took a girl to go to Corral? Go to Corral, you know that little buffet, like eight dollars, eat all you eat. Oh man, I mean, hey, she ain't got a lot of money in your pocket. I'm telling you, that's the best. Whenever place to go. we going, we whenever she come back, she's coming back really soon. Actually, whenever she comes See, back, I'm I'm, I'm taking I'm, her out to dinner. Okay, I don't want to cut you. I do be having sex, don't y'all? Yeah. Oh man, wow. I ain't gonna get too much into that, but shit, yeah. You like it? You enjoy it? 
Bro, I'm just, I just got to ask. I'm sorry. I don't know. You talk about so much love here. I don't know. I just like I had to ask. I mean, hey, hey, she watching this, babe. Please don't get mad at me. I, I, don't get I, mad at me. I mean, it's top 10 topics. So we we're here talking about the top, topest topics here. I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm sorry yeah, about that, I, but... yeah, I enjoy it. Oh, that's great, man. I know she loves it too. So, Yo! um, so when you look, when, last question here, when you look for, what you look for in a girl, man, like to, when you got a girl now, like, what do you look for? My girl. And what is those qualities she show you to make you say this? The man, girl she supports for? me no matter what, okay. no matter what it is. I mean, this bitch is my ride or die. Like she'll, she'll kill a motherfucker. If anyone tries to like kill me, like she will, t- she will literally put her life on the line for me. Wow. Like I want that type of love. Like, I mean, she's. Like, she is amazing in every way, man. I mean, she, like, yeah, we both got our problems. But, like, I mean, we we don't let that stuff come against us. I mean, we love each other strong, man. We um we don't let anything come in between us. And, I mean, if we got a problem, we talk it out. We got, like, anything. Like, we, we haven't gotten to a real big fight yet. It's coming. I'm, I'm, I mean, in a relationship, probably it's would. Come. We'd probably fight, but like, I mean, I, I like the thing is, I never want to hurt her yep. ever. I don't want to hurt her in any way, cause like, whenever I feel like I hurt her, cause like, I'm always second guessing myself. I'm always being like, have I done everything all right? Am I good? Like, I'm like, have I pissed you off in any way? No. I'm like, do you, you want to scream, kick me? I don't give a shit. You punch me in the face. I don't give a shit. Like, I don't like. I mean, like. I just want to make sure she's happy, and I mean, I just I look for her. I want to give this girl happiness. Hey, and hey, I feel like you're doing that, though. You, you yeah. sound genuine, man. And I just uh, the stuff I look for her in is like, I mean, she 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 wanted to watch this. She if it was live stream, she was like, she was like, I'm gonna watch every single second of it. She's like, she's working and she don't give a shit. She wants to watch every single second of it. Wow. Anything with me, true she, supporter. Anything she with me, she was she yeah, she's my number one fan. That's what's up, man. Hey, dog, I appreciate you coming on Top Tape no Topics, man. man. We we dive into so much, man. It was, I feel like it was a deep conversation, man, from things you yeah. overcame, yeah, the it was music, fun. how it started, from your parents growing up to you taking a sip of that slate milk. By the way, slate up to everything, man, to your girl relationships, man. We talk you give about a shit a if I take right one of them bitches? Hey, man, hey, it's on the house. It's on the house. <laughs> give me one of them bitches. I'm taking that bitch. Definitely, definitely, man. But like, once again, man, like last, any last remarks you want to like tell people about your music or your girl or whatever you want to do because you've been heavy on a girl. But yeah, anything you yeah. Do. Um, all I would have to say is, um, if anybody here that does come to me and listen, thank you. Uh, thank you for all the support. Again, uh, I mean, I need if you could come follow me. Come follow me. My my Instagram is Lost Boy X. Uh, you can you gonna tag it? Yeah, I can tag I, it yeah. for you. Um, just I mean, remember like if anybody going through anything, I'm always in your ear in your headphone. I, I mean, whenever I keep going doing music, I'm always gonna be in your he- headphones and anything. I'll always be there. So if you ever wanna listen to some music, I mean, come check it out. You heard it from him, your boy Lost Boy X, man. Once again, man, I'm your, I'm your host of Top Tier Topics, D Gray. Appreciate Lost Boy X coming through and rocking with us. Wow. Appreciate everybody that's watching this. Appreciate y'all for continuing to watch this. Make sure y'all subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click that red button on YouTube. Subscribe now. Like, comment. Peace. We out. We out.